Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. My name's uh, John Judkins. I'm a product line director with, uh, with Mentor, with Siemens. Uh, I've been in the wire harness business, the wire harness manufacturing business, well, forever, basically. Uh, so this, this is my passion. And this afternoon, this is the outline of the, uh, the, the, the presentation that we're gonna go through. Talk a little bit about the wire harness industry, why it's so important. It's a terrific industry. It's almost unique in, in, in many of its characteristics. But there are challenges, there are pressures on the industry. Those are growing, they're not shrinking, they're growing. And the current methods that are used in the industry, uh, that have been used in the industry for decades, are starting to creak under the weight of these pressures. Digitalization. Technology is uh, something that can, that, that can be used to transform an organization to meet those challenges. And I'm gonna go through a few examples to illustrate uh, what we're talking about here. So almost all of my presentations these days, I start by, um, you, you know, by uh, showing what a, a, just a terrific industry this is, what, you know, why people should care about the wire harness industry. It generates sales of over 150 billion every year. Uh, almost 30% of that is automotive, and automotive wire harness sales are growing. You know, all, all the analysts say that this is a, 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 an industry that continues to grow. One an analyst says that by 2021, it's going to be 61 billion. Another analyst says that by the year 2025, it's going to effectively have doubled from where it was a year or so ago. So it's an important industry, and at the same time, it's got you know, several unique characteristics that I'm sure many of you in, 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 uh, in the room here understand. This is a BMW car and some facts and figures about this BMW 1 series, but it applies to almost every modern day vehicle. That the wiring, it's one of the most complex systems, it's heavy, it's expensive. Uh, there are millions of, of, of configurations that, that, that are available to customers. Um, and a huge amount of the, the, the wire harness assembly is done by hand. It's an extremely labor intensive industry. So it's almost unique in, in many, many respects. And, and because of that, it, it has lots of challenges. Uh, so, you know, driving down costs, weight and space, the, the, the kind of holy trinity is the, the ever present um, objective. Uh, uh, huge numbers of design changes, huge numbers of configurations, mentioned that it's a labor intensive industry. And then one of the key ones is, is the one at the top there, which is that many of the, the processes in the industry these days are, are, still, are still fragmented. Uh, the process that goes from design through to manufacture, in many cases for many companies, is, is, is fragmented. So profitably manufacturing wire harnesses is challenging, and I've, I've listed some of the issues here. We're not gonna go through all of those, but I, I want to pick out two or three things. Uh, first of all, design data re-entry. Um, and in the opposite direction, uh, changes that are made by manufacturing engineers to improve manufacturability are often not reflected back uh, in, in, into the design data. So, you know, state of the art as we, we, we look around the industry, as we visit um, uh, wire harness producers, and if we look at the process, the high level process from design engineering through product engineering, manufacturing engineering, and, and generation of the manufacturing documentation, what we see is very clever people, people who are very experienced, they've worked in the industry for a long time, working very hard, working with Excel files, working with AutoCAD drawings, then passing the information along to the next person in the chain who recreates the Excel files, recreates the drawings, and, and so it goes. And you know, that, you know, this isn't my software developer's view of what the industry is like. This is what the industry is like. I know, I, I've been out there, and, uh, and, and we talk to people from the industry, and they tell us that in this day and age, this is just no longer acceptable. Uh, this cycle times of months still, uh, you know, not only to introduce a, a new product, but weeks to introduce changes. Mistakes are made, mistakes cost money, they cost time. There's rarely enough time for a manufacturing engineer to optimize the, the manufacturing process. So we start off with a sub a suboptimal process and try to effic um, improve efficiency once we're in production. And what executives tell us is that this is no longer adequate. We've got to change. We've got to change the way that we do things. So that's one of the things I wanted to pick out. Work instructions, we've heard about this, this afternoon already. Um, it's difficult, it's a, it's a time consuming, challenging job that requires skill and expertise to create work instructions and, and, and to do it on time. And if you don't have adequate, satisfactory workstations on time, that can lead to operator errors 
operator errors that are found in test drive rework and potentially scrap um, and potentially uh, huge amounts of unexpected costs. And then the other phenomenon that I want to mention is this thing called tribal knowledge and uh, the risks associated with tribal knowledge. That's really important information that's in people's heads uh, that they potentially take with them when they, when they leave a company. Uh, so here's some definition that tribal knowledge is unwritten information that um, may be needed in order to produce uh, a product with the correct uh, with the correct level of quality. And we've got an example here of a product line that was restarted after after two years of being down, uh, but they couldn't get it to work, and they had to rehire the original operators in order to uh, you know in order to get a product that was you know back to the standard that they that they had two years ago. And this is a real risk. People walking around with, with methods in their heads that are undocumented, and it's going to, you know, it's going to hit at some point. And here are some statistics that, that, that kind of predict that this is going to be a problem, that 10,000 baby boomers retire every day in the US, uh, that in Canada, from 2011 to 2016, there was a 20% increase in the number of Canadians of, of re who reached retiring age or, or above. Uh, and in my home country, the UK, it's predicted that between 2016 and 2020, the number of people between 16 and 49 is going to reduce by 700,000. What it means is that we've got a shrinking workforce, and it's going to hit some industries. Some industries are going to be okay, others aren't. So senior management, it's predicted that senior management is going to be hit by this. But specifically, as far as you know, our interest is concerned, engineering and manufacturing is going to be um, impacted. And then the question becomes for managers, how are they going to maintain productivity? How are they going to um, keep all this expertise within the house? How are they going to uh, de-risk programs? So if we just look at a typical high-level manufacturing engineering uh, flow for the wire harness industry, starting with product engineering who releases designs or, or changes into the manufacturing engineering area. The, the harnesses are costed and quotations are made to the customer. Typically, there's a, require, there's a requirement to fine tune the product engineering um, of, of the harness. The main form board is designed, production modules or sub-assemblies are designed, sometimes requiring extra jigs for the, for the sub-assemblies. They're fed into the manufacturing systems. We design uh, a bill of process. We design the process for the entire harness, generate the bill of process, push that into ERP. We create the work instructions. Sorry, we balance the, uh, the, the whole thing. We balance the, the final assembly carousel in particular um, to make sure that we've got a good, efficient process. Cost the bill of materials and then create the workbooks. That's, you know, that's a 30-second way of describing an incredibly complicated process. Uh, but my point is that the things that we talked about before, um, they, they can have a big impact on this process. Errors from, de from data re-entry can occur at any of these stages. Uh, all of these functions here require skill and expertise, uh, and therefore there's a risk of people leaving the company with key methods and, and, um, and information in their heads. So all of these functions are at risk for, from tribal knowledge leaving the company. And then there are other key issues dotted around, potentially in, in, inconsistent or inaccurate uh, costings, uh, suboptimal form board design or manufacturing process design, which can lead directly to um, efficiency, lack of efficiency in the, in the production. It could be that our manufacturing costs, our overall costs, turn out to be higher than the quotation that's been made to the customer, which is, which is a disaster. And then problems, big problems can, can arise from not having the right information uh, at the right time on the shop floor. And on top of this, you know, we've got new pressures. There are new pressures that the industry, you hear lots in this conference about autonomous vehicles and electric, electric vehicles. They're not making anything any easier. And so the point is that in order to survive and thrive in this, um, in, you know, in this new era, then companies have to reinvent themselves. They need to become digital en enterprises, rethinking every element of, uh, of their business. Uh, and if they don't, uh, and we've heard it in other presentations today, uh, digital or failure to digitalize is the reason why half of the uh, companies in the Fortune 500 have disappeared over the last 20 years or so. 
So three key aspects to digitalization or the model-based enterprise that are I want to mention, and then we'll, we'll, we'll weave these into some examples in the wire harness industry. But creating digital models, first and foremost, digital model of the, the wire harness product, digital, digital model of the wire harness process, creating the so-called digital twin. Uh, automation, clever technology, uh, which uh, utilizes rules, which takes um, information and techniques out of people's heads, embodies it into rules or constraints, which can then be used by automation, is the second pillar. And then uh, just reusing data, not recreating, not re-entering, but uh, taking advantage of the fact that we've got data in a digital form and, and reusing it throughout the process as efficiently as possible. So this is the point, is that we don't need to create new documents. We don't need to re-enter data in a digital world. We uh, create a, a digital thread in which all of the functions uh, from uh, architectural design, functional design, through to manufacturing, engineering, and an after-sales service, they can all use the same data. They can all use the same data models which means that um, any of the individuals in this chain has access to decisions that are made in other domains. We have faster design cycles. We're able to spot and address issues earlier in the process when it's, when it's cheaper to do so. Uh, re reduce rework, minimize costs, and then greater, and in particular, as far as my presentation is concerned, greater manufacturing efficiency um, is, uh, is really the target. So with our product's capital, we define the, the life cycle, if you like. We segment the life cycle into five, uh, five areas, five stages. We talk about define, design, uh, produce, and maintain, or all in, uh, underpinned by, um, by data management capability. Uh, I'm particularly interested in this presentation, in this produce area, uh, in which we're designing, doing product engineering, and then manufacturing engineering, we're designing our process. And so amongst other things, we're designing sub-assemblies, engineering form boards. Um, we're doing the line balancing, generating the bill of process, and generating the workbooks, and doing that in the context of a, uh, a, a bigger enterprise in which there's a, typically an ERP system, uh, a manufacturing execution system, systems on the shop floor that need to be connected, like wire preparation and <coughs> automatic test equipment. This is. The, the environment, the wire harness manufacturing engineering wire um, uh, environment. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about applying the, um, the, 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 the digitalization um, concepts. What I'm talking about, we have a model of the harness, we have a digital model of the harness, but we also have a digital model of the factory process, the production line process. This is what we call the so-called digital twin. The combination of these uh, um, constitutes the digital twin. And then we have automation. We have automation that leverages these digital models and uh, is, is able to use rules, is able to use company-specific rules in order to do clever things like generating process designs, calculating costs, and uh, producing documentation, which is then used on the shop floor. I mean, this is the basic pattern you know, the digital twin, the automation, and then, um, and then generating uh, information that's used down, downstream. So here, here's an example. Uh, this is just a very simple example. I know that manufacturing companies, they have their own um, IP, their own concepts and philosophies about how, you know, what constitutes a good sub-assembly, uh, a connector pre-assembly that's, that's, that's assembled prior to the final assembly stages. Uh, but here, here's, one, here's one example, um, so this, the, the, the sequences that we create uh, modules, first of all for the, the, the um, complex splice daisy chains, we take them out of the equation um, and make them into sub-assemblies. We then look for connectors with no variation in, in the wires in terms of the, the options, you know, the, the wires all uh, belong to the same um, options. That makes a good production module. Uh, and thereafter, in this particular uh, way of doing things, we sort the connector from that with the lowest number of remaining wires, um, and then eventually uh, en ending up looking at the ones with the highest number of wires. And if we spot any modules on the way that, that, that contain all of the wires in that particular bundle, then we can throw in the insulations and clips and, and things like this. So as an example of um, 
of a way of doing things, uh, a, a piece of company's IP that is currently in people's heads, but which could be taken out and which could be put into this uh, digitalized environment. Another example is, is form board fixtures. You know, how do we uh, decide which is the best form board fixture for a, a junction or, or for a connector? Um, and then having decided which are the best ones, how do we decide how to place them? You know, how many do we need for a bundle of a certain size and length? Again, this is information that's in people's heads that could be instead um, captured as a set of rules that's, that, that's used by automation. Here's another example of a, 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 um, a, a problem. So um, upstream delays have reduced the time for the, uh, the manufacturing engineer to generate work instructions. So they're late, they're inadequate. It means that the people on the shop floor don't necessarily know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They're spending time looking for, for guidance. Um, quality problems can ensue. Uh, the harnesses that are made may uh, be rejected by the test equipment. Key program delivery milestones are not met, and then unexpected late freight costs can occur. And, and these can amount to you know, millions of dollars in, in disastrous circumstances. But again, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, taking the, the, the concept of digitalization, if we have created a digital model of the harness, if we have a digital model of our process, if we have other resources like workbook templates and libraries and style sets, then we can automatically um, generate those work instructions. And I'll, I'll show you in a little while just um, a quick snippet of how that's done or what it, or what it looks like. So, so here's a, yeah, just a, a very quick uh, run through what, uh, what capital actually does and how it uh, embraces this, this digitalization that I've been talking about and reuse. So starting off with the digital model of the harness, this looks like a drawing. It isn't just a drawing, it's a model. There's rich data that, 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 underpins, this, um, that underpins this design model. And that allows us to automate uh, many, many, if not all, product engineering tasks. So this is the, the, the starting point, the foundation. And from the same uh, model, we, we generate the form board. It uses exactly the same data. We, um, we um, select form board fixtures. Let me just take that back a little bit. From the same model, we do our sub-assembly design, we create the, the designs, we evaluate them, we do our line balancing using exactly the same uh, set of data. And so we've got a nice process, and then in the end we generate the work instructions. So here we go generating the work instructions. Um, so all of the pages here have been automatically generated. We have a, a, a quick flick through. We see we've got some charts of data that are fed into the, the wire cutting area, perhaps, perhaps directly into the machines. We've got our um, twisted pairs. We've got our uh, jacketed multi-cores, uh, spliced daisy chains. So the diagram's all automatically generated by out-of-the-box technology. Uh, here we're putting plugs into a connector, we're pre-plugging a connector. Here we're pre-wiring pre connectors. We've got various form board diagrams. We show how sub-assemblies are laid out onto the board. And all of this is um, a, continuous, a, a continuous process, a digital thread from start to finish, all using the same data um, and uh, hugely improving the efficiency and uh, accuracy of the process. But the vision goes beyond just that. Um, so here we've got a, a, a shop floor that people may be familiar with, starting with the stores on the left-hand side, going through the wire cutting area, preparation, splicing, connector preload, pre final assembly, and then the post-assembly tasks. And you know, already with capital, we're able to underpin this by technology which automates the design uh, and optimization of the bill of process, of the manufacturing process and automates the production, the associated production of the workbooks and uh, the production of the form board, the visual aids, in other words, that are used throughout the process. Uh, clever technology that I wanted to highlight for, um, for optimizing the sub-assemblies. Uh, clever technology which we're working on right now, and I've been showing this to, to, to various people over the last few weeks. 
uh, which helps um, which helps engineers to uh, efficiently balance the uh, the final assembly line. Uh, but it doesn't just stop there because there's a, an ecosystem of other systems uh, that are important. So being able to um, integrate with the ERP system, being able to spread these, this documentation around the shop floor using a manufacturing execution system, being able to receive data from the shop floor through the manufacturing execution system, and then the feedback that analyzes that, that, that data and helps improve the process, helps improve the design. Um, you know, that's all part of the, um, the, the, the overall digitalization. So this is the vision then for the whole process that we have uh, digitalized, model-based planning, simulation, optimization, integrated systems, and um, an execution on the shop floor. Some proof points. I mean, these are this is data that we've gathered from many different companies in, in different industries. Uh, I just wanted to point out a few that have come from harness makers. We've, we've heard of design error. Uh, being reduced by 50%. We've heard about 30% reductions in process from quotation through to, um, through to production. We've heard some incredible figures like 85% reduction in the time to create uh, form board designs. So, so this is the overall message then. This is a summary that wire harness makers, they live in a tough and challenging world uh, in order to survive and grow, they, they must adapt. Digitalization offers the potential to change everything, and you know, in order to survive, it's time uh, for uh, it's, it's time for wire harness makers to become digital enterprises. So that's the end of my presentation. I think we may have a couple of minutes. To, uh, any any questions for me? Hi. Uh, well, in um, in an ideal world, of course, the digital the the, the changes are, are fed into the system in in a digital format, and you know they're processed and and what have you. If that isn't possible, then we've got manual ways of turning that data into digital data. Well, you also enhance it with other manufacturers. You enhance it. You add spot tapes. You add you add characteristics. To Oh, you, you may have to do that, yeah, for sure. You, you, you may have to, uh, yeah, the, the design set data typically doesn't contain everything that uh, we need in the model in order to represent the whole manufacturing process. So there may be um, items that are not in the bill of material. There may be items which are consumed on the shop floor but not in the bill of materials. Uh, so we can add those manually. We can have it as part of our pattern, part of our... Um, uh, automated processes that, for example, when we have a, 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 a piece of harness which is so long, we're going to add uh, additional pieces of, you know, easy to take to keep the thing in place. So there's a number of different me methods of doing that. In the worst case, you manually enter it, but in an ideal world, we're, we're, we're either receiving data electronically or automatically generating it through, through our know-how. I, Can we uh, compare different uh, designs of the form board to look at maybe a proof of response <coughs> or the process? Yeah. Can you quantify that? Yeah. Yes, we, we absolutely can do. Uh, I mean, comparison uh, is a huge, uh, you know, is a huge need in this industry because there are changes all of the time. And we want to look at different scenarios. We want to compare different scenarios. We want to choose the best one. So comparing. Uh, and we want to do other complicated things with form boards as well. In some cases, we may want to merge. We want, may want to look at uh, just how possible it is to take two similar harnesses, merge them onto the same board. And so again, we've got comparison technology, which can give you a percentage. You know, uh, So you may have a threshold. If it's above 80% common, we're going to merge it if it isn't. And so, yeah, I mean, the software can do those comparisons, give you those feedback, and, uh, and you can make good decisions based on that.